Hi and welcome to my Astrori 27mm f2.8 review where I'll be looking at this 27mm autofocus APS-C lens to see how sharp it is, checking out its focus speed, focus breeding, vignetting, weight, chromatic aberration and distortion as well as telling you how I personally got on with this lens after using it for well over a month now. Now, crazily, this lens costs just $126, which in terms of photography lenses is absolutely peanuts for a lens. So you might very well be thinking, Kieran, this isn't a pro level lens. Why are you even reviewing it? Well, you see, when I started out in photography, I could probably just about afford this lens. That's the truth of it. So I know what it's like buying on a serious budget. You know, my first real camera was a seven-year-old second-hand Nikon camera I bought at a petrol station. I know it sounds dodgy, right? And trust me, it probably was. So lenses like this really excite me as it pushes the bigger companies to maybe reduce prices a bit or up their game and give us something truly special. So you just gotta remember, competition is good for all of us. So we should all be hoping companies like this do well and can produce amazing products. So anyway, come on, let's get into it. And I'll talk you through how I got on with this lens. So this Astrori 27mm f2.8 lens is for the Nikon Z mount. And please do remember, this is an APS-C lens, so it's made for crop sensors and not for full frame cameras, although it will work on them perfectly with a crop, of course. Now, for transparency, I should also say, the nice people over at Pergear did send out this lens for review, but I was not paid to review it. I've received no other compensation for doing this review, nor will I, and these are my own honest thoughts in it after using this lens for several weeks now. So when you open this nice box then, what you get inside is the lens of course, and you also have a USB cable inside. The USB cable is there for softer updates, and all you do is you just find the USB-C port, which is here, you take the little cover off, so you just take that off and pop it down somewhere, plug in your USB-C cable in here, and you can update the lens. And then just remember to pop this fella back on along again. This Astrori 27mm f2.8 lens is currently retailing at about $126, which is just an incredible price. Now, usually when we say something is light and it's cheap, that means, yeah, you guessed it, plastic. But unusually, when I picked this out of the box, I held it for the very first time, I thought, yeah, it, it is really lightweight, but the body feels like it's metal. There actually is a metal body on this lens, which is completely crazy given its price. So it's cheap. There seems to be a reasonably good build quality to it with a metal mount and everything on the back. So this lens just has to be as sharp as a balloon. Well, you're not going to believe this if I tell you. So I'll let you be the judge yourself and let's go have a look at some test chart results there now so you can see sharpness and you can decide for yourself. Now, before we get to those test chart images, there's two things I wanna show you here first. The first is this photograph I took of Dobby here at f2.8. And as you can see around the eyes, this is really sharp. This is this lens shot wide open. So straight away, very first photograph I took with it. Wow, that was really impressive. I was not expecting that. This is a lot sharper than a balloon. The second thing I want to show you then is, because it's the first thing you're going to see really as such when I pop the test chart up is, there is distortion in this lens. There's no hiding it, there definitely is distortion here, but that distortion can be very easily fixed in post-processing and it only takes a couple of seconds. And this is what the image looks like after post-processing, so that distortion can be corrected very, very quickly. So it's not an issue. So looking at test chart results for sharpness now, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom in here to the center of the image. This was shot at f2.8. And as you can see, when zoomed in, there is still some lovely details in this photograph. Going to f4 then, there is a small bit more detail in the image, as you can see. 
and at f5.6 there is little to no difference. Moving up to f8 then, exactly the same thing, little to no difference. Once we hit f11 and f16 then, the image does start to soften slightly due to diffraction. But for a lens costing $126, those results are simply amazing. So looking at corner sharpness here now, and what we're going to do is zoom into the bottom corner, and this is at f2.8. Now, as you would expect, because this lens is shot wide open at f2.8, the corners aren't very sharp. Once we stop down then to f4, you can see there is a small bit more detail here than again. And again, stopping out to f5.6 produces slightly sharper corners again. But when we reach f8, these are the sharpest corners achieved on this lens. At f11, it softens fractionally again, and at f16, it softens a bit more due to diffraction again, of course. So f8 is the sweet spot for corner sharpness on this lens. Again, though, for just $126, the results you're getting out of this, even for corner sharpness, are ridiculously good for this exceptionally low price. Looking at vignetting now next, and you can see when the lens is shot wide open at f2.8, there is vignetting on this lens. But once you stop down to f4, that vignetting is more or less gone as far as I'm concerned. Stopping down to f5.6, and that's perfect. Nothing whatsoever wrong with that. And yes, that is incredibly easy to correct in post-processing. Looking at bokeh now next, and how this image actually renders out-of-focus backgrounds. And as you can see, it does a reasonably good job. And for $126, it does a ridiculously good job. This photograph was taken at f2.8. Now, the one slight thing you will notice is if I just zoom into the back on the lights, there are actually tiny bits of starbursts starting to pop on those lights themselves. So maybe that's not ideal, as it could be perceived as being slightly distracting in your image. Then this is what it looks like at f4. Now we're going to f5.6. And at f8, those starbursts really start to pop on the lens itself. Going to f11 now. And here we are at F16. And as you can see, we have some absolutely amazing starbursts here now at F16. But from F8, the starbursts really start to pop through, with F11 probably being my favourite of the lot, and then F16 being really powerful. So looking at chromatic aberration here now, and this is one thing I noticed straight away about this lens. There is very little chromatic aberration on this Astori 27mm f2.8 lens. And what little chromatic aberration is there can be very easily corrected in post-processing. So it's no issue whatsoever on this lens. So looking at contrast now, and this photograph was shot at f2.8, and you can already see in our own eyes, there's some lovely contrast in this lens. Now, obviously enough, when you stop down to f4, it increases very slightly. f5.6, it increases again. And at f8, contrast levels are fantastic. But even wide open, the contrast out of this lens is really, really good. So for testing focus speed here, and you can see I have Dobby set up along here. It's focused on Dobby's eye there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on the box in the background there, which is just down here. So if I move the arrow up over and we'll say there, and if I focus now, boom, there we go. Really fast, really positive, really quick. I'm going to go back towards the eye again. And there we go. And again, there's a lens behind there. We'll see, we'll focus on that. Perfect. And back towards Dobby's eye there now again. And there we go. All the time I've actually been using this lens, I found the focus is spot on. It just gets nailed absolutely every single time. And it is crazy, out of such a cheap lens, for it to work this well and this smoothly and this quickly. Now, the other thing, as we're doing this here now too as well, is just when I focus backwards and forwards here again, again, it's on the eye, just as regards focus breathing. If you look down along the sides here, on the edge of the table here, and on the edge of the table here, as in how much it zooms in and zooms out, we're on Dobby's eye here now at the moment. So if I go to the background again, I'm just going to go back here, and if I focus here now again, you can see it is zooming out a small little bit. So there is a small little bit of focus breathing in this lens, but personally, I found it very acceptable. And for $126, you can't expect any better than that. And again, back on the eye again, boom, there you go. Okay, so as you can see, the results are incredibly impressive, especially at this price point. And given the impressive build quality then too, there is very little to fault in this lens. I'm genuinely left scratching my head, asking myself, how can this lens be made to sell for just $126? 
this lens shouldn't be this good then, should it? Now in saying all that, the one issue I have found with this lens is the manual focus ring. And I just find it's a bit too stiff for me personally. It's completely different to all the other lenses I have here. It just doesn't feel quite right. Is it perfect? Definitely not. Is it a problem? No, it's definitely not too as well because the manual focus ring works perfectly. It just feels a bit too rigid for my liking. But in saying that, it does work beautifully. And isn't it crazy that that is the only problem I can find with this lens? So overall, if you're looking for a great little lens for little to no money, I think you would be incredibly hard pressed to do better than the Astori 27mm f2.8 autofocus lens. But what are your thoughts on it though? Would you buy one or did you buy one? And if so, what did you think about it? Was I completely wrong about the manual focus ring and is it okay for you? I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. So um, yeah, thank you very much for watching again and see you out there or see you in the next video.